Hello and welcome to this Unreal Engine 4 tutorial which will showcase how you can make a really simple particle system, more precisely a particle emitter, which will create the effect of a fire. Now this is a beginner tutorial so it will showcase you the very basic elements of a particle system and the whole cascade subsystem of the Unreal Engine. Of course the potential of the same Unreal Engine in terms of particle systems is huge and it provides much more but I'm going to showcase you only a really simple setup of how cre to create a fire particle emitter and place it in your level. So as you can see this is my level I have been working on it for some time now uh, you can see my other tutorials mainly about landscaping, foliage, procedural tools and everything else on my channel but here I'm planning on creating a small fire right at this position as you can see I created some uh, wood <laughs> elements that are really really bad and basic but I'm planning on adding a small flame right here to simulate something like a camping fire. To do that I'm going to create the same particle system. Now I already have a folder in my content browser which is called fire particle and here I'm going to add the same particle system. Only to do that you need to left click, more precisely right click and you get the drop down menu from where you choose the particle system option. It's already created here, I'm just going to rename it into fire and add particle. And here we are, when we double click on it, we open it up in the cascade editor. This is your basic setup where you create all of the particle systems. Now I know it's pretty daunting, it looks uh, complex and it is. But I hope through this video I'm going to show you only the really basic stuff that you can kind of understand and employ for your projects. Any particle emitter is basically a point in your level or any other space you're creating in Unreal that begins to emit some kind of generated particle. Everything basically you see here is for a single particle. You can add additional particles here which would look basically the same with all of the same elements to create complex systems. So for example think of a fire as a system that includes several different elements. It includes flames, it includes some flying embers or pieces of the material that are basically solid but flying up, it includes smoke. A really cool nicely designed fire would also likely include many other elements as well. In that case, but if we keep the three elements I mentioned here, we would have three different emitters. One for fire, one for smoke, one for let's call them embers. However, I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to create a single emitter emitting the fire or flame particles. Right now we have this preset emitter which is emitting nothing but kind of a uh, preset elements. The first thing I'm going to do is to go into the required section here. The emitter is selected as you can see that would be helpful if we had more of these but we have only a single one so it we're always at it in any case. I'm first going to change the material segment. Uh, right now this is the default particle. I'm going to change it into a fire material that you have in your starter pack. Out of all of these choose the M fire sub UV. And here we go. The fire is complete. No I'm kidding. It's not. It's basically only a single image from this material being uh, reproduced again again and again. We can check that out in the material. It includes a, let's try it like this, it includes a system of images that are being projected which is here and here's the same image. It's a grid of six point six times six a flaming, um, ah, here it is, flame material or images which are a kind of a lifespan of a single flaming particle. 
Right now the emitter is producing only the image one. It's scaling it up and it's dying down. That's all of these elements right here. As you can see, it adds uh, the same particle, it expands it somewhere around here and then it slowly dies off. That's the lifetime and initial size, initial velocity, how fast are they going. All of these elements are open to editing options. However, we want first of all to ask or tell the emitter to use all of them, not just the single one, the first particle here. To do that, uh, let's close this down and close the editor material as well. We'll add on a different emit part of the emitter and it's under the SUV sub UV Im index. So sub image index is the thing you're looking for. And now we can basically change the number of particles the same emitter is using. To do that, we're using points. Now this is pretty complex, I'm also grasping it on a really surface-based level, but the points are basically the moments where your emitter starts. Now I'm, not, I'm planning this really plastically and probably not fully correctly or maybe even incorrectly, but my the goal is to kind of just showcase you the very basic elements here and that's not simple because uh, the cascade editor is pretty complex. So basically, really simply put, in value is on the point zero, the first image the particle emitter uses. That's the image zero or the first image on that six by six grid. So we're going to leave it because it's already using it, but at the out value on point one, it's not zero, it should be not 36, which isn't the last image, but 35, which should be the last image in that line. And if we edit it, we have now a slightly different look, but we're also going to edit in the required the sub UV and how does the same process of particle emitter move, how does it move through the basic larger image. So it's not a one by one, it's 6.56 6 and as you can see, we are getting now a bit of a mixture here. We're also going to add it uh, something that defines the way it changes between these images. And we're going to add a linear blend, which then basically simply moves through the different images in that six by six grid mix them together and blends through them as if the, you would use a kind of a video editing program or animation program where you have a transition, a smooth transition from one element to the other. And as you can see, the flames are much better now. They look and feel pretty more engaging. The next thing we're going to change here is the color. So I'm going to go back to the same required segment and here choose color over life. Now again we have 0 and 1 at when you choose the color over life distribution constant curve points. We have the starting value and the ending value. Initial starting value is 0, ending value is 1. I'm going to change the initial color to red. I want to start off my particle starting out with red and ending up with yellow. So it kind of stimulates that moment of flames disappearing into the air. So out color you can edit uh, red, green, blue here or you can simply click here and set up the color immediately. As you can see it's now pretty strongly red. I'm going to move it towards here and maybe, yeah, let's leave it here. So it ends up being something like this. This is my starting color and as you can see, it's simply going to the neutral white. I'm going to change that a bit in the point one with the out value, which I'm going to set to yellowish. If I want to make it even more transparent, I can make it like here. But I'm going to add 
a stronger tint of yellow. It's moving towards green, but I'm going to move it towards red. So we have that flaming effect. And the last thing we want to add here is right now all of my particles are starting from the same position, giving it that kind of a stream of a column or something like that. It looks pretty unified. I'm going to add a rotation, a rotation factor here. And initial rotation means that they will basically start from random positions. As you can see, the same particle right now looks pretty cool. It's really basic, but it does simulate something like a fire. We could also add and impact many other elements here, like velocity and size. We can add like the starter size, the way it's distributed, as you can see, maximum, minimum. We can change this, for example, from minimum to 15, 15 and 15. So we have a more of a kind of um, ellip ellipsoid shape. It starts small, grows and then fades out on the top. We can go even smaller and move all of them to five. So it's an even thinner column, but I think I'm going to leave them at 20 on all axes. And there it is. This is your basic fire meter. You only need to save it. You can, when, after you save it, you can close the editor and it should be where you created it under fire particle, where you simply drag and drop it on your scene. Now we can move it like any other element in the scene and we can then check it out from the game itself. As you can see here is the particle. We can move it a bit further down so it comes from the actual elements of the wood. And let's try it out or check it out. And here it is. It's a really small, really modest fire in the shape of an A. It <laughs> reacts <laughs> to being shot at not any different to that any other element in the game. It has no colliders at it. So it's transparent and you can move through it. But the particle is definitely there. Now the process of creating particles includes a lot of tinkering, moving, changing, editing elements. Right now I'm seeing that my particle probably should be bigger. All of the particles should be bigger. The fire should be stronger. Maybe I should add some glow to it and stuff like that. But basically this is how the Cascade Editor works. As you can see, it's not that simple. It's not that intuitive. It has some of the elements like having to move those images to tell Unreal not to use only a single image, but the entire grid of images is kind of counterintuitive. But of course, Unreal is a process that is always improving, changing. And this is how you use Cascade to create a simple fire particle. That's all for me. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. Hopefully you can overlook some of my insecurities. I'm a beginner uh, like yourself, most likely. And hopefully you can subscribe to my channel and stick around for other Unreal videos, podcast episodes, gaming videos, and many more things you probably like just as I do. My name is Ivica, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next Unreal tutorial. Until then, have fun in the best game engine in the world. Bye bye.